so hello everyone uh, welcome to another uh, session of uh, uh, thinkly talks uh, today we have uh, an amazingly fun uh, personality with us uh, his name is sayan mukherjee uh, sayan uh, has a background in uh, it and uh, currently he is a solutions lead at adobe and he has pre previously worked with google hotstar Uh, to name a few of the companies that he has worked with so today we'll learn what uh, science li life journey is and we'll dive deeper into the realm of adsd programmers so hi sayan how are you doing i think uh, the most common sentence of uh, 2020 was something like uh, hey uh, you're talking on mute or uh, sorry i was talking on mute so <laughs> i think it's a good start so thank you for introducing me so nicely meet I am just trying to get connected to uh, the uh, Zoom meeting through my laptop as well because uh, I think that's a better camera. If you, unless you think that this video is good enough, we can and the audio is good enough. More importantly, we can just proceed uh, whichever way. I think I think this one is good enough. We can we can carry on unless you want to uh, move on to the laptop camera. I mean, uh, th this is easier for me since it's from my phone. So I'm I'm actually okay with it. Just the sound is oh. sorry because my friends often complain. They'll be like, "We can't hear you properly. Uh, what do you do with your with your uh, setup?" So, whatever. Like, I'm okay with this then. Okay. So, how's it going? Please tell tell us about yourself, Sam. We would we would want to know uh, your life journey. Okay. So, uh, very briefly, I am actually a mechanical engineer. Um, I graduated from Delhi College of Engineering, which is now known as DTU. So I graduated in 2011, and since then I have had like uh, I would say an interesting journey. I'm sure a lot of people uh, have had similar journeys because they say that in India, you first become an engineer and then you discover what you really want to do in life. And uh, there are very very famous examples like Harsha Bhogle, R. Ashwin being the most recent that I that come to mind. Like other more famous ones from the 90s would be like Anil Kumble and others, right? <laughs> So in my my case, what happened was like uh, I did mechanical engineering, and at that time, you know, it was considered. And I really hate this uh, phrase when I hear it. It's like it's an evergreen field. So you know, everybody. It's like you know, tenth boards and twelfth boards. You know, when when you tell people you're in tenth or twelfth, every uncle comes and says, "Beta, you have to be very serious. You have to be very serious." <laughs> so similarly, in mechanical engineering, like oh, very evergreen field. Like the Indian head nod, and you know that sort of <laughs> went followed me around and. Uh, So I was actually very interested in computer science and programming and robotics. So I did a lot of that in college, but then like I thought that you know this is the last chance to stay in my field. If I could, if I had a time machine, I would go back and like you know shake myself. Like you know you're thinking yeah. wrong. Don't think like that. So I went into core. I went into power sector, like uh, General Electric. Uh, spent some time there. Then I went. I thought that you know let's go to consulting. Went to Ernst and Young. Spent some very little time there. Didn't like it very much. Then I was lucky enough to get into Google, which was sort of like a university that also gives you like foreign exchange programs, which was quite interesting. You know? Google was very very interesting. Uh, went through like uh, a lot of different exposures uh, there, both like country. Got to spend some time in Australia, New Zealand. Uh, had a wonderful stint in Thailand. Then uh, I thought like, okay, let's get out of the Google womb. Let's explore the world. Went to Z. uh with one of the startups uh, called easy mall uh again interesting experience but i i think i was able to leverage it better by going to hotstar where uh, i had the easiest job in the world as i like to tell my friends so this is 2017 18 and my job is to sell hotstar uh, sorry uh, sell ipl to yeah each. i think we, we have spoken uh, briefly uh, over this offline yeah we have yeah. So, like, just imagine selling the IPL in 2017. You have to literally go to people and you have to say, you know, they're from these agencies that uh, represent all these clients. Like, you know, Aramco will be very familiar to anyone who watches the IPL. So, Aramco is being handled by, let's say, some WPP, and you and you go and say, you know, I have a sponsorship opportunity for you. Uh, like, you know, can you just commit some percentage of your media budget? They're like, okay, what is your property? And I would be like, IPL, and they would be like. Take my money, take my money, you know, take my money. So they would be like, if if you go with them asking for one crore, they would give you two crore. So very easy job, and the best part is you got to meet like all these cricketers. You met these uh, 
other personalities from the field so very very entertaining life uh, then i again and this is something i share in uh, full transparency i had an accident actually when i was working at hotstar so uh, i wasn't able to work for very long there even though it was the job that i liked the most and uh, because of that i had to take a career break and uh, after that it it was quite sobering actually staying at home for like 9 10 months uh, considering will i ever be able to have like a normal life again a normal job again um and then i like you know joined uh, like an agency which i didn't really like i won't name that agency because i haven't even named it on my resume not a great environment um but then i joined adobe and it was again very very familiar to like you know google or the gs of the world like you know very solid processes these these companies are very good to work for because they are very solid processes and uh, you know like the people component of those companies doesn't uh, negatively impact the experience so much so yeah since at adobe even at adobe this is my second profile like i was i was an account manager uh, i think we call them different things so these are people whose job like you know after after the sales has been completed uh, it, it's these people's jobs to ensure that the revenue that's been whatever you promise the client you have to fulfill so the, we we have this saying that you know the sales guys go and promise the client the moon and we go and give them a golf ball so you know it is our job to deal with <laughs> it is our job to deal with the you know we got it modified expectations in this field so so that that was my job and i got to know the product very thoroughly i actually thought of stepping into product in the middle but then i was like before i go to product it's better that i go into because i've been like at some like a product is role at google so i was like uh, let's let's get into development you know let's uh, right. sort of like you know writing scripts on the side and you know using these code as uh, indian uh, joiners will be very familiar with jugad you know like you want to get things done yeah. very quick right you write these scripts and you write these you got so i got into this proper development uh, team and uh, honestly i just feel like i should have done this thing uh, 10 11 years ago our jugards call automations like did you did you have few automations uh, to your help like that you m- might have deployed at work so actually that's how i started uh, coding so that's how i funny funny uh, funny story so this goes back a long time when you mention automation right i think automation- also also i i'll just interrupt you here and before we move ahead i would want to know uh, i mean uh, unless unless you have a uh, i mean unless you want to share it i would also want to know uh, your time when you were uh, after the accident when you were uh, you had taken a break and how, what was your thought process uh, then like what exactly happened if you want to explain more about the entire situation of course of course uh, always ready to like uh, share my journey so uh, because you know this will help uh, other people who are on that path so so what happens is uh, i had a car accident like it was a nasty one and uh, after that i was uh, it, so it was not just a physical injury i i was also like mentally sensitive because of my ADHD right so you have like certain sensitivities and uh, because of that i was i was going through uh, like it's i mean i won't say it was panic attacks or anxiety something because those are different so with adhd what you tend to like go through is emotional dysregulation and uh, you know uh, like i mean we can get into that you know the pillars of adhd is so weak so like called later but what was happening to me at home like for example at home i was i was not healing well and uh, adhd we don't do very well with uh, patients we are not very patient because we don't have a consistent sense of time yeah. so for us time yeah. works differently than for like a non adhd person or a neurotypical person like you know you guys live in uh, the joke is you guys live in like linear time we live in parallel time like uh, it, time is very different for us so things weren't moving fast enough i was getting very frustrated i was trying to do things not able to do things so uh, that was hard because at what one point of time see what happens is you start losing belief you start losing that faith that uh, will i you know ever be able to get up again will i ever be able to like you know have a normal life quote and quote normal life i think all of us want that like whoever our peers are like if you're a sportsman and you've got an injury for you normal life is going out and playing that sport although it is not normal by any any means right that's why we use the word normative and not normal so i just wanted a quote and quote normal life like my friends are going to work coming back partying on the weekends you know I, and all of yeah. that was completely like completely uh, gone for me for like 8 9 months and uh, just staying at home lot of introspection luckily i am a reader i read a lot 
so i wasn't lonely or bored because i had a lot and i think i must have finished 5 600 books uh in those nine months because i had nothing else wow. to do yeah like that's I, an achievement I, in, that's an achievement in itself and also yeah. i i also so want to understand how did you deal with it how did you come out of it how did you get yourself back to work after after your uh, accident well what did happen was i i got better obviously like slowly you get better and you see the changes in yourself and then i start, i got back out on the market you know i started applying for these roles and uh, when i'm go, i'm like so i've always been good at interviewing so um yeah go on oh no i can okay, hear my i'm sorry it was me <laughs> it was the next yeah. so i've always been good at interviewing uh, for for example the google interview is notoriously difficult to crack uh, not not so much uh, i mean i had a lot of fun in the interview process i i just try to be as much as of myself as possible this time it was slightly different because time it was more like need to uh, you know give the interviewer what what they want and this is something i would advise everybody against especially if you have got adhd i'm not saying see everybody is not uh, happy with like outing themselves and even i didn't out myself in the beginning right at uh, adobe i sort of uh, went into that later so uh, just one sec guys thank you thank you so much so my lovely wife uh, just very nicely got me a cup of tea and <laughs> Uh, I mean, we can use this as a segue to support systems later and how they matter. But yeah. uh, so I was trying to be this person that the interviewer wanted, and uh, I got into this company that, like I said, I didn't mention. I didn't like the company, but then I was completely myself at the Adobe interview, completely, like absolutely myself. And they they liked me, which I liked, and I was able to be more. Myself. So uh, it was tough. It was uh, difficult. but with interviewing as with anything else once you fall off the horse you get back up again and consistent practice like like again uh, this is something i tell anybody who comes to me for interview advice which is look apply for five jobs apply for 10 jobs you want that one perfect job don't apply for just that apply for jobs you don't want and apply for jobs that even in your head you are laughing at yourself thinking that <laughs> i will never get this job you know apply yeah. for the- Five plus and five minus, and give all ten interviews, and definitely you will get at least two. However, you know, like good or bad you are, as long as you are taking that feedback. So, uh, yeah, um, you asking about automation, right? Do you want me to go into that, or do you want to go into uh, something else? Uh, so, I, I, we are getting a lot of uh, questions on the on the community itself. Okay, okay. Tanishka says uh, uh, she is very excited for this session, and it's a very interesting topic. and she wants to know how do programmers with adhd manage distractions and still excel in their coding tasks but before we take up this question i really want to i mean for the community members for the people who are watching us and who don't know what uh, adhd programmers is all about we want to know what made you may create this community what was the idea behind it all right so i am an avid redditor and i cannot uh, honestly take credit for uh, creating this idea however like uh, thanks to the wonderful platform that thinkly has provided and guys i am not being asked to say this okay it's not like a plug but thinkly has provided it's, it's not a paid promotion <laughs> it's not a paid promotion but honestly like I, and the thinkly community generally it's a community so i just had this idea and i knew some good people at thinkly and uh, they have sort of helped me carry the ball forward uh, so uh, adhd programmers is actually a very popular community in reddit it's got 50400 members so we thought to sort of expand because reddit is not for everybody neither the interface nor the users pattern so we thought to make it more accessible right uh, like at the wonderful people right. at think that so adhd uh, programmers the first time right i, I was actually uh, so there are some unique challenges to adhd and uh, unfortunately you can if you are listening along you can spot some of it which is the going on tangent uh, going extremely yes. on some answers like like i'm doing right uh, I, but, uh, but i allowed how how we uh, swiftly uh, kind of uh, put the career advice uh, section in in the so it, it is it is kind of self evolving itself and uh, yeah please please carry on i did not want to interrupt you over there not at all uh, like i i like a uh, discussion oriented format even when i'm listening like to podcasts yeah. so i think it's uh, I, and even like you know i i dislike those one is too many presentations i try to have interactive presentations like i do a lot yeah. of uh, training, of uh, teaching in my both job and my spare time so 
I feel like we should be part of the experience. Uh, if you can just uh, mention the name of the person who asked this question, I can sort of call them by name. So, so Tanishka is asking, how do programmers with with ADHD manage distractions and still excel in their coding tasks? All right. So Tanishka, thank you for your question. That's a wonderful question. Uh, it shows you're extremely engaged. So I'll give you a very short answer before going into the deeper part of it. Short answer is ADHD is both a blessing. I won't say it's a gift and a curse. That's very dramatic. So it's <laughs> it's a, it's a boon and a bane. Sorry, I had to say that. So ADHD has both like potentially upsides as well as it has some challenges. So the upsides have to be you know harnessed and managed. The challenges have to be handled. So the upside is that uh, yes, while we do have poorer focus. we also have something called hyper focus so for example i'm an avid reader so i i read like one or i i finish roughly like a book every 2 3 days so i i read a lot like my last activity every day is reading first activity every day is reading whatever so when i'm reading right uh, i yeah. i can read for 12 hours 14 hours 16 hours at a sitting like i remember yeah. i lord of the rings when i was 12 years old in like two sittings two or three sittings and my parents were like you know this ye bachcha to bahut badmash hai they are like except when he is reading so you have this thing called hyper focus so whatever you really, really enjoy you can do with sustained amounts of concentration so this is a known fact about adhd the other yeah. thing is of course first attention dispersed attention is the very opposite which is you can't focus on anything or like you know for example i go into a room i'll need something and uh, it's right there i can't see it i literally can't see it and i'll be like you know i lost my wife helplessly like you know where is this i can't find it <laughs> she come into the room and she will she just pick it and she will be like sign it was here so uh, this <laughs> thing to happen it's challenging to and again we can talk about this later about how challenging or not challenging it is to be, be with someone who has adhd but yeah this is how it helps i have a huge interest for uh, my topic my programming anything that i'm doing so that gives me that energy that power like often times after office hours like maybe so my timings are 12:30 to 9:30 so 8 8:30 pm everybody usually you know goes away uh, i'm not bothered by things or meetings so that solid 8 o'clock to like 12 o'clock window for me is very good like those 4 hours i have solid absolute concentration then of course there is one more thing i would like to add to any other adhd listeners here stratification helps so what do i mean by stratification one of the biggest distractions today is social media so i am lucky i belong to an older generation um i was born in 1990 so i am a 90s kid uh, social media was not hard wired into my emotional circuitry right that instagram validation makes me happy but it doesn't give me dopamine here unlike uh, most of you born after 2000 sorry little joke <laughs> No. so so i can turn it off but you can turn it to your benefit so i have like three youtube uh, users one youtube user is exclusively for my work like it's my development uh, youtube so like on that i will just have python i will just have deep learning machine learning xyz i will not have anything else that is one discipline you know, similarly for instagram i i don't use instagram anyway but i've created a new instagram where i'm following all this and i get all the latest news really fast but of course you have read it so so discipline and stratification in these things help you because you have to understand you will become distracted there is there is no cure for that right it is attention deficit hyperactive disorder so there are going to be some challenges you have to manage those challenges so i hope this answer the question um tanishka i hope i'm pronouncing it correctly tanishka and tanishka okay thank you yes. tanishka so in simple words to put it in uh, really sim- simplified for our users we would we would it is safe to say that adhd programmers is a community of programmers with adhd just to uh, clear that question if anyone has that and uh, uh, anupama over here says that it seems like a fun and interesting session already and she is looking forward Now we have another user called zishan ali and uh, he's asking if he if you can recall a specific moment where your adhd turned out to be an asset rather than hindrance in your coding career also oh. the aha moment all the time all the time and and i yeah. i'm not saying it it happened just yesterday so and these things will keep on happening a lot of it is happening just right now so so yeah. for this, you have to get into the adhd brain okay so now um, the adhd brain and without going too much into like the labels and the symptoms and all of that so the adhd brain functions very differently from the neurotypical brain so in, so our brain let's say for now it has two circuits so one circuit is the task oriented circuit 
which is sort of you know counting down uh, linearly the time you know like this time this time this time this task this task this task the other is the reward oriented circuit so in adsd circuits are out of sync so uh, again i'm not an expert this is i'm this is a gross oversimplification but those those circuits are out of sync in regular people those circuits are in sync which is why you uh, i don't know if you are neurotypical meet but uh, which i'm just so uh, which is that neurotypicals right they will have this yeah. like achievement whatever 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 like you know how people studied for exams um, yes. they would study, like very consistently i would make a very detailed plan for the exam i would make yeah. like marks you know itna marks ka itna question all of that i will make it i would never follow it that's a different thing yeah. so that can the idea is but because advance just making that would give me the reward so how does it work towards us which is that you know in whenever we have competition whenever we have observation so like for example right now a lot of my stuff that i'm saying right i haven't prepared any of this ahead of time i woke up like half an hour yeah. ago all of this is coming out so fluently and spontaneously uh, to a large part is because our minds function better when we are under yeah. stress we are under pressure uh, when we are being observed when there is a competition so like for example if you are in a meeting see that doesn't mean you it's magic right like uh, like for example you have those guitar solos on stage like uh, jimmy page and you know all of those wonderful wonderful solos that sound so much better live than in the studios because in a live audience because he is already so good at what he does he has mastered his art he is going yeah. one extra that virat kohli six right uh, versus pakistan that the shot of the century right he, he, he just went from we we just went from zeppelin to uh, virat kohli over here connected You can yeah, see the, connected. That's where the ADHD comes in. You can see those connections that most of the time are like you know not there for most of us. So similar yeah. in a team meeting yesterday, I I had actually done the groundwork. I'd done the grunt work uh, in my hyper focus state. I'd done all the prep, and somebody asked me a question: How does this sync up to that? And yeah. see, knew the answer. I didn't know the answer, but at that moment, that answer came to me. And the thing is about. like because i am aware of this right i am aware that uh, like this does tend to happen so i tell people that hey listen i am going to talk now maybe for next 2 3 4 5 minutes and a lot of what i am going to say is going to be spontaneous so uh, please don't ask me questions about it right then wait until i have yeah. finished so that's that's your yeah. setting yourself up for success with other people they already know what they want to say it's clean there and you know they can just you know just present it to other people with me it is more about a performance than a presentation So I hope that answers your question. This is one of the biggest, biggest benefits that ADHD gives me, um, because again, like I'll just tie it together. For yeah, it, it is very well said, actually. Yeah, thank you. So like what you do. Yeah. Because you like what you do, you can hyper focus on your input because you are so connected to your input. When you are asked to present it, you are actually performing and not presenting. And because you are performing, it takes your presentation to the next level. Yeah. So that's your advantage. That's great. that's great to know actually uh, then we have uh, deepa agarwal uh, she wants to know that in your journey with adst what discoveries or realizations have had the most significant impact on how you approached your work what journeys uh, okay what discoveries so one of the one of the things that does keep happening and uh, guys i'll tell you for those with adst or for those without fatigue is real fatigue is a real thing uh it sounds very obvious but uh, fatigue is real in the sense that even in this journey right i take therapy very regularly i'll take therapy once a week sometimes i'll take therapy twice a week and my therapist is going to be different from your therapist like i will need like there are layers of therapy so my wife is a therapist and this is again not a plug but like you have counselors um, then you have people who have done slightly more specific studies who become what you call uh, psychologists uh then you have people who have done even more specific studies like phd's and so on so what they become very specialized titles called clinical psychologists and then you have psychiatrists which is yeah. a different category is like medicine right so uh people without any like uh, adhd or any of these uh, so they are called disorders for a reason they are called disorders because they inhibit your functionality they, they will uh, like for example without the proper therapy and i take medication also like very uh, like there are different approaches to taking medication some people use like you might have heard of modafinil you might have heard of ritalin adderall like for those familiar with american culture uh, or david foster wallace you might have heard of all these medications in not india not really but 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 the, i can I, you can you can tell me what they do i mean I, sure so so yeah. adderall all of these modafinil these are all uh, they all uh, release dopamine in your body and so essentially what happens is uh, ever let's go back to school 
do you ever remember that child uh, from your class who was who just couldn't sit still you know either shaking their legs or they were bouncing off the walls or they were just like you know creating a lot of hype and noise all around like they weren't bad or anything but they used to somehow just get punished more or they used to like you know like i was a standing student in my class i used to stand outside most of the time <laughs> looking inside so that is because we have that more energy and we yeah. it, and uh, we need that stimulus we need more stimulus than you guys you can just sit still like my wife she's an introvert <clears throat> she needs even less stimulus so she can literally sit still and look at a tree blowing in the wind and for hours like one hour two hour whatever i can't do that i i enjoy that sight i will take photos i will draw but you see all these stimuli has have to come in. like i have to stimulate myself by doing something so that is the core nature so the medication addresses those things medication often provides you like dopamine yeah. available in when you need it so you are able to focus on your work and not start seeking stimuli like you know because yeah. you're not stimulated enough so uh, therapy oh. medic medication is a choice therapy is a must and therapy is something i say is a must even for people who do not have any underlying mental health condition simply because uh, like you know you go to a dentist despite your teeth being like you know good or bad right that's just hygiene you go to a doctor every once in a while get a checkup similarly like and i'm not i'm not saying go to therapy for sure but yeah therapy helps so uh, yeah i'm sorry i i have lost the thread of conversation this time what was the original question no, i no no go go ahead i mean it's a it's a very interesting story you you can finish what you were uh, you were going to say and then we can move on to the next question sure so i do work with my therapy so by work what we do is we target these uh, spe- okay i remember the question so we target these specialized thing right so there are these stages first we will try to look at behaviors and we will try to look at uh, external external world right like mere sath ye hua this happened to me and then it will go back to what did you do before it happened what did you feel after it happened you know through that we start analyzing parts of you know yourself like for in- instance in my case very early on uh, i had identified that i have an attitude with taking feedback and it's actually com- become completely opposite now so before i used to like you know be very sensitive to criticism and and this is an another adhd trait so we have like something called rsd which is rejection sensitive dysphoria rejection rejection sensitive sensitive dysphoria is the opposite of euphoria euphoria yeah. extremely happy extremely you know yeah. powered up charged up dysphoria is the very opposite yeah. so with adhd often what happens is if you if you tell them that you know uh, like they, they've come with a lot of enthusiasm they've made something you can't tell them that you know this thing isn't good enough because they will think that they aren't good enough and i'm not stereotyping on adhd yeah. but this is common to a lot of uh, you know the presentations of this uh, of this uh, disorder or of this label this is common to that and uh, there's nothing wrong with that you know everybody has different sensitivities however being aware of it really helped me because when i became aware of it right so i started listening for the word feedback i started requesting feedback by myself so that you know there's a three step process to feedback you thank them for the feedback you promise them that you will cycle back after a certain period of time with the results like hey how did i do you told me this two weeks ago how am i doing now and third whatever is relevant to that conversation you like you know add into that person so i i started taking this i started doing this work yeah. with my i started approaching this and i just did this in my work life to start with like the easiest lab is your work life because your investment is the lowest like emotional investment you know like emotionally we are far more invested in our families and in our friends and in our work i know people who are extremely emotionally invested in their work and uh, i don't know if it's healthy for me but uh, yeah i started doing that at work and things got so much better uh, me personally like you know i i uh, started get, getting promoted faster i because at at some level right uh, your technical skills and by technical i don't mean like python or c++ by technical i mean like for example in in thinkly right you are leading the community management so technical skills are different there. there there are technical skills and there are people skills so after a while technical skills don't differentiate you so much it is mostly how you handle people so understood i i mean i think uh, i mean i'm not saying I got that your point yeah yeah exactly so like more more of a understanding of technical nuances in the field that you are in strangely even in my field right the i'm yeah. i'm a developer. even in my field it is not the best developers who get promoted the fastest who go up the highest it is the people who are able to handle the people issues because yes. see, 
technical skill is a systems issue see a technical skill for a movie director is going to be how camera position panning one third rule all of those things yeah technical skills in my field is going to be very different technical skills for an automobile engineer is very 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 different specific skill but people skills are a common everywhere yeah. and b they help you you know force multiply like being able to manage four people i am a force multiplier. so i think that that way therapy helped me and when you said identifying right somebody asked that uh, wonderful question actually um, ms agarwal i i believe she asked a wonderful question what did you identify so for me identifying my rejection yes. dysphoria and how it was affecting me in my workplace how was i reacting to perceived rejection because it's not rejection at your workplace you know and to all adhds out there one of my best friends also has adhd actually two of my best friends have adhd uh, i keep telling them this thing i am like you know they come to me sometimes because uh, often going to another adhd helps because uh, because see at the end of the day nobody else can completely tell what you are feeling so my therapist also has uh, she's also got adhd and she's the therapist so it's wonderful because uh, you know she yeah. can actually 100% you know hard relate or hashtag hard relate what what i'm going through so so we identify those so identify your patterns uh get that insight but insight does not equal change insight doesn't equal work you have to put in the work putting in yeah. the work consistently you know on yourself and i'm sorry i'm sounding like some you know uncle who's giving yarn but unfortunately <laughs> after i turned like 30 and i moved out of my parents house and i got married life <laughs> contains a lot of work and this is just like you know this work will make everything easier yeah it does yeah that is true so uh, in the moving on to the next question we have mohit with us and mohit is saying hi san what a cool topic man i want to know what unique strengths do programmers with adsd bring to the table when it comes to coding specifically to coding excellent question so uh, mohit nice to hear your question so i mean um, it will vary from programmer to programmer but okay i'll give you some of the examples uh meet is it okay to use hindi uh, in this uh, forum yes please so in hindi uh, we have a word called chul yeah. so, so chul simply means your compulsion to do something right when you are motivated your by impulse it. your impulse and, and that impulse yeah. is sustained right like for adhd yeah. they are extremely impulse uh, motivated and they can have that sustained impulse and to do something or to avoid doing something we have a very high motivation so for example yeah. in programming what happened was i was absolutely not happy with the environment setups suppose in my system they were extremely complicated uh, like just as like, i can't obviously go into a lot of technical detail because of other reasons but uh, let's say some environment setups i had a huge problem like uh, yeah. why why it is like this this is so bad this is so hard because my belief is everything should be as easy as possible because i feel like unnecessarily a lot of people make a lot of things difficult so that a lot of people don't get access i and i think i mentioned this to you also meet that making things yeah. accessible everybody is the key to sustained growth and yeah. this is something at adobe i have learned like you know both my eyes open both my hands out i have learned this thoroughly like we need different people so environment environment configuration ke bina you will not be able to do a lot of things in yeah. in development paper here what reason is so we had some problems with that our tools were not proper uh, basically getting you your job done was extremely difficult you had to copy paste so yeah essentially yeah basic things so like for example yeah. setting up so the process used to be very complicated like we had to let's say copy paste a lot of information and like you know you are just literally copying and pasting it and uh, then you are putting it in the server and then you are logging into the server and then when you're in the server again there is a lot of uh, the copy pasting in word it's, it's very it's very tedious and uh, a lot it is of, very tedious it is very tedious right and a lot of uh, our like staff they are from very specific fields like if you are like uh, if you're working on apis you will only need the api information so it's okay you only have to remember a different thing so my work as uh, so before i was like a solutions lead i was uh, an application systems engineer so i had to look over everything but yeah. i had Press all these things for everything, and I very quickly got irritated. Like yeah. for me, because every time I'm typing that out, started annoying me. So what I did was one uh, weekend, or I think it was a Friday night, I sat down, 
and i took some 6 hours but i automated your as not automation and i automated everything i, I yeah. created a file that had shortcuts and automation for everything and then i shared it with the rest of my team and they were like oh this is wonderful because and anybody who joined after that right all new joiners so so something that you should take us let's say 30 minutes to do now takes us like 5 minutes to do so that everybody can focus on the thinking work they can focus on the they can thought process uh, yeah like, well, i had to learn a uh, new language it's called bash so any developer here knows bash so and you know how tedious bash is so bash is just for the uninitiated it's uh, if you have uh, apple uh, if you have max whatever runs in your terminal that scripting that's your bash if you have windows the equivalent of bash would be something like uh, powershell whatever runs in your windows so it, it's old it's tedious it runs on another operating system layer but i was willing to go in and run it and i think it is my adsg that did give me the the sheer like you know 5 6 hours of focused concentration to go in yeah. and do and i was aware of it. i i let my frustration build you know i let it build let it build let it build let it build I, and get yeah. us this in therapy also and one day like i just unleashed it so i mean the closest analogy i can give you is like you know you see those uh, animes where they like you know uh, they're taking all that power dragon ball z something like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> so as we move closer to the, to the end of the session unfortunately today's session will last only till uh, uh, 2:15 so let me just quickly sum up all the questions that people have asked so that you, you can kind of consolidate uh, the answer in like one go uh because i i see there are a lot of questions over here uh, uh just to name a few uh, anupama loves your session she is really happy with the insights that you have provided so she she, uh, she says great tips uh, then we have deepa joshi uh, who is asking if you incorporate any specific tools or techniques to stay focused uh, i think we have covered that and uh, arman here uh, asks uh from your perspective what unique uh, challenges do neurodivergent individuals often face in tech industry and how, how have you seen them overcome these channel challenges and uh, shantanu jadav uh, is asking how do you communicate with your team about your adhd and other accommodations then we have nisha who is asking you have an incredible journey how do you think the tech industry's approach to inclusivity and support from neurodivergent individuals have evolved and last but not the least there is uh, vinita who has uh, complimented you uh, so i am sorry he, uh, she has just related to you and she is saying that he, she was also an outstanding student just like you great glad to know. so i hope you have you have got all the questions yeah uh, do you want to take it one, one at a time or, or or you can just go on and cover it up in one go I think I'll take it one at a time. It will be interesting because, uh, like, there'll be a constraint, and I'll try and answer it uh, everyone in like as short as possible. So, so let's do like a rapid fire. Yeah, yeah let's do that. That'll be fun. Me, Jyotir, okay, Amir. So just wanted to know that. Up. Yeah, number one, Deepa. Do you incorporate any specific tools or techniques to stay focused and organized while coding? Yes, I use Zen mode a lot, and I can show you my setup. I have a. a is there a way to turn my camera? Yes, there is. um i i have like this kind of setup as you can see i have three monitors and one yeah. primary so i use four monitors so that yeah. helps because again for uh, neurotypical that's extremely disturbing distracting a lot of my friends you know, scream in pain when they see my setup for me that's amazing i can focus on several things at once so yes yeah. i use that kind of a setup and i use like i use divisions like i that way my brain doesn't have to really work on organizing things so one monitor is only for let's say code one monitor will be let's say for documentation for notes like my notes taking software anything right uh, the smallest monitor is for let's say slack or teams where all the bullshit interruptions keep coming so i can just you know turn that monitor away if i want to focus and one monitor is going to be let's say um, i i usually keep it on youtube where uh, like i'm i'm listening to let's say some ai news or if i'm actually doing something that like you know i'll need help with like i'm working on some api that i don't know about i might be looking at youtube or github or Yeah. something on so essentially keep a primary and uh, keep like a subsidiary which is like for your chats and stuff and uh, keep yeah. other for uh, like you know buffer spaces sometimes i supplement this by putting my tablet and my phone up so i'm actually technically using five screens uh, it, it's all on you so but yeah these are some of the tips and tricks that i use uh, yeah that's about it i think that that's technical enough for everybody to be satisfied 
got it now next question is from arman uh, uh, he is asking from your your perspective what unique challenges do neuro neurodivergent individuals often face in tech industry specifically and how excellent. do you overcome these challenges excellent question arman and i think uh, meet this will give us fuel for our next sessions also because yeah. neurodivergent encompasses a wide variety of terms and the challenges faced by each label and i'm going to use the word label yeah. a bit i am not adhd i am cyan who has got the label of adhd because i have some symptoms in common i want all of you to feel you are not whatever your label has that's been assigned is and especially given like the the quote and quote flexibility of mental health in india right um, uh, we are getting better but we are not great so suppose you have yeah. depression you will face a different challenge suppose you have depression and you are in a shift so your night shift is actually going to make your depression worse because it your circadian yeah. Your interactions with light, and maybe we'll pick up on Dr. Newman's uh, light therapies and all these tips and tricks to deal with. If you have ADHD, likely your challenges are going to be different. If you have bipolar, your challenges are going to be different. So overcoming them will require uh, different methods. One thing is common: you will find overcoming all of these things easier if you have therapy. If you take therapy, if you take like whatever kind of, I mean. no matter you're going to a psychiatrist i go to my psychiatrist once in two months once in three months because my medication needs adjusting i go to my therapist once a week so uh, i'll check if it's all right with uh, thinkly i'll check if it's all right with my wife and my therapist i will be sharing their credentials in upcoming episodes if if all the you know legalities work out so that you guys sure. have different resources to some of the best therapists i know and i'm not just saying it because Definitely. she's my uh, uh, even my therapist is amazing and yeah i I'll, i'll share those but that one thing is consistent and one thing that i see as a challenge is people they'll go to therapy right they'll feel better after one or two sessions then they'll drop off and then they'll again go in a crisis and that's the worst that's the worst thing you can do like it's like it's like you brushing your teeth when you're lost your teeth right that lost yeah. it too that doesn't make sense so therapy is the only thing that will help even neurotypical people overcome challenges at the workplace so wonderful companies like adobe wonderful companies like google we have eap employee assistance programs where we give therapist assistance to everybody you know mental health for all so next question please i hope that was short and uh, in, like you know useful enough almost almost so uh, i'll move on to the next question by shantanu jadav and yes. you have to be really quick over here Yes, uh, yes. How yes. do you communicate with your team about your ADHD and any accommodations that might enhance your work experience? I was very transparent about it to my managers, and uh, they yeah. they are honestly uh, they are, and I'm not just saying it. They are the best managers I've ever had. Most empathetic, yeah. human, um, excellent, simply excellent. So I communicated it to them. They both went and they read up about it, and they're like, "What help do you need?" I gave them more literature. They read up more about it. uh with my team members see i don't make things a big deal like if you are going to if you are going to like you know everybody responds mirrored to how you treat things most of most people don't even know what adhd is so yeah. what i times do is in a meeting if things are getting stretched uh, like for example if i'm the one stretching stretching thing i'll be like hey listen sorry guys i do have like a an attention issue sometimes uh if i'm close to them i would say i have adhd as you know uh not using it as an excuse but this may happen so please bring me back to topic when this happens so i am not just telling them that hey listen i've got this problem please deal with it i also tell them because i have this problem i am aware of it please course correct so i am giving them both a means i'm giving them a lever to control the outcome as well as an understanding of why this particular lever might need to be used so that's how i do it may work for you may not work for you that's amazing that's very good to know and this was such an amazing session sayan but unfortunately we i'll have to cut it short even though uh, the users are asking continuously asking questions but we only have this much time for this particular session and we will surely have sayan soon on our platform with some amazing uh, ama with some amazing topic that we can discuss on probably we can we can talk about adhd and uh, anime or maybe we can talk about 90s adhd kids or something like that So thank you Sian for uh, joining us on this amazing uh, session uh, and wishing you all the best we'll see you soon in the next session Thank you Meet and thanks to all the Thinkly team thank you for the wonderful questions everybody I I really didn't expect uh, such a turnout so I'm really happy I got to share some time with all of you uh, yeah see you all soon and I hope you have a great Friday great weekend guys
and yeah more power to everybody also there are a few questions that that we might have left out and i would i would request you to go on thinkly community and address them if you if you could and uh, thank you again for joining us today all right see you soon sayan on uh, the community postings